Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Coolers WP Blab episode number 124. This particular episode is brought to you by Servers Press, makers of desktop server. Feel free to go take a look at their website over at serverpress.com. They've been doing some amazing stuff over there lately. And if you're looking to do local web development, they make it easy. So feel free to go take a look at that. Well, Bridget, we've paid the bills. Let's talk a little bit about the particular topic at hand. So we're going to be talking about why even WordPress professionals need to hire, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, lesson learned. You pitched you pitched this one and I was like, wow, all right. That sounds like an interesting topic. Heck yeah, well, I want to talk about that. It's so funny because, I mean, obviously people know that I blog about small business marketing, branding, and social media at bridgewiller.com, right? And I've been doing business to business social media since 2009. So 10 years yeah. I've been doing marketing on social media for businesses. <laughs> and, and, you know, in 2015, I finally built my site that wasn't you too can be a guru.wordpress.com, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> That was like what you know my big exciting thing from you know learning things at WordCamp. And yay, here's my site and it works. It's mobile, whatever. And I, and I, and I get now I get paid to look at people's websites and tell them I have no idea what you do. Your bio is terrible. I that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so when you have what is it when you have one finger pointed at back, you have three pointed back at you. <laughs> right. And we always say, oh, the cobbler's children have no shoes, but our websites are our portfolios, right? Oh, yeah. So I thought, you know, instead of humiliating somebody else, it would be good to tell my own story. <laughs> I, I think I think it's a great idea. And I think that we're able to have this type of discussion in a nice open environment. And we're not, um, we're not feeling like we're being judged about anything, or anything like that. And it's always nice when you've already resolved the situation. And you're just kind of talking about what was already resolved. So <laughs> that makes it easy too, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I mean, a lot of us are well, I would say maybe 90% of our audience who's watching the show, and thanks for watching, uh, give us a shout out on Twitter, WP Blab. Um, we are self-taught, yeah. right? And so we know, oh, well, I need to tell people I have a website, so therefore we throw one up. Sometimes static HTML, because we just don't want to deal with stuff. Hope to God it's not on Wix. But whatever, WordPress.com, that's where I started in 2007. I mean, it's real, right? So, because some, I'm a something is better than nothing person. So perhaps the more perfectionistic people would have already like completely had um, drawings and done things in balsamic to have, you know, their wireframes because right. they already wrote their content. They spent nine months mapping this out. I'm like, I don't have time for that website, right? So um, the thing is that I originally started, you two can be a guru, tongue in cheek. Like social media is not that hard, people. Just be a polite, normal human being and you'll win every time. Because no matter what happens with technology, human behavior never changes. If I go to Hennessy's and I say hello to people, guess who's nice to me? The people I say hello to. <laughs> it's really not that hard. It's reciprocity. Hard to say, easy to do, right? And so, and so I started this blog on WordPress because somebody would ask me a question, you know what, like you do. And then I'm like, oh yeah, here's the reasons. Like even today, somebody said to me on Twitter, how do I build my following? And I was like, oh, I have a blog post, 10 ways to build your following, right? So originally it was just like a personal kind of archive and my unsolicited advice, tutorials, et cetera, right? Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden we're, we're in 2017 and I'm doing this full time. It's no longer a side hustle, right? Yeah, it is the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> my part-time job is the side hustle <laughs> yeah, it's, it's go to tripdesigns.com <laughs> why not why do you use a travel agent they don't take commission you know what you're right and so that's yeah. the side hustle so i was like okay i hate this theme da, da, blah, whatever 
And then I got a tattoo, which I turned into a logo, thanks to sharing show LaFraud. Um, you know, so it was a process. And this, this is uh, not unlike any other WordPress story. Like, I, I will like cut to the quick for the people who just started <laughs> watching and say, here's the, it's too long, I didn't read. Um, Rhonda Nygaard from Fat Dog Creatives redesigned my homepage in less than 24 hours. I had three minutes time on site and dropped my balance rate by almost 11%. Okay, but it didn't just start there, right? So yeah. I so I fussed around, they made my logo, all of a sudden I have, now I'm like a legitimate. Orajima and Leto are my fonts. You know, I installed Google fonts so I could have them on my site. I know what my colors are, not by heart, but like, you know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. And then, um, Jocelyn Mozak from Mozak Design, she does this thing where she gives free website reviews. She'll just turn on Facebook Live and then, or Zoom or however, I'm not sure the technical how, how but she just, she just goes in cold. She goes, okay, hey, this is Jocelyn. Well, I mean, she's super nice about it, but like, I would be like Mystery Science Theater 2000. <laughs> she's really nice you know <laughs> or the two old guys in the Muppets oh right. this is terrible <laughs> yep. but she was so nice that she just like she would see the little box window at the bottom of her and she's so nice about it and everything and then um and then all of a sudden you see my website and then she put it on her website, which we could put in the show notes so you guys could see like what it was before I started fussing with it again. Um, but yeah, and then she was like, I love your tagline, your your um, voice, your power, your brand. Cause I was like, what, what I'm really good at is like being a method actor and assuming that persona of the company. So that I harness what they have and then I like, get that on the internet right on the internet <laughs> but but all of <laughs> all of the copy was about me well yeah that's, what you, that's 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 the way that you're you would think right it's like well, well yeah so i was treating it like linkedin right yeah <laughs> which i have on linkedin you know sure. i have a linkedin but my home page, my about page could be like, I am so awesome. I did this and such and whatever. And here's my portfolio and here's case studies. That's where you talk about who you are. But your home page has to talk to your audience. I know this. I tell clients this. But when I saw and heard Jocelyn tell me, that's great. But this copy is all about you. I was like, oh, oh, oh. So then I, <laughs> so then I went back to my Beaver Builder because I was building all my pages um, those kind of pages in Beaver Builder, and I was like, okay, let's let's figure this out. Let's go back to because um, I had um, actually when she did my review, mm -hmm. I didn't even have a static page anymore because one of my other friends was like, Bridget, your homepage is terrible. Just make your make it a blog. Like it was that bad. So when Jocelyn was like, you need a homepage, but just not all about you. Then I was like, hmm. So I reactivated when I built a Beaver Builder and then it's like, okay, here's some of my most popular stuff, blah, 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 whatever. I could do this awesome things for you, testimonial. And it was fine. Like, yeah. you know, the reason why I had this tattoo, which, which is abundance in Mandarin, uh -huh. is because in my first year, I got 97% of my sales goal. So the website nice. was performing. You know, websites are for validation and discovery or social media is either way. It's part of a brand awareness campaign, right? So I'm telling people I'm taking clients. They like, who are your clients? What do you do? I want to go check out your website. Pretty normal. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I hate this theme. And so I changed the theme. This is so it's my. As much as I change my hair, I almost change themes. Like I'll just go so sick of it. Although my hair is easier to change colors than themes are. 
Changing themes is like the biggest black hole time suck that ever existed. Yeah. Because even if you do the preview, it's never totally right. And then if you activate it, then all of a sudden a lot of your widgets are like way on the bottom. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's so funny, Jason, because because I had recently changed my theme. I was giving away free calls on April 16th, the day after tax day to my yeah. WordPress developers. And one of my friends saw it on LinkedIn that I knew from construction. She's like, oh, I just had this side blog, but I need any new stuff. I changed my theme and now I can't see any of my widgets. And I go, I bet they're in inactive widgets in the widget section under appearance. And she goes, oh my God, that's who they are. Because it's not obvious, right? Uh, you, right. you made your widgets, your widgets are there. You change the theme, you're like, where are my widgets? <laughs> <laughs> I lost everything. Like you, like to people that looks broken. You know that's a weird WordPressy thing, right? But I was yeah. remembering that. So anyway, so I said, okay, I need something a little bit better. Like I was feeling kind of like. So my sister always tells me, Bridget, when you get stressed out, you change your hair. Like I feel like that's something I could control. She's probably right. So like, yeah. you know, I, I lost a client. I'm like, okay, I'm doing all this hustling. I got four new clients. And I'm like, I don't like this hero image because I just left whatever the plain one was for Reykjavik. And I couldn't make anything work. And I love Canva. You know how much I love Canva. So it's like, okay, Rhonda did Robert Nissenbaum's site from Tactical mm -hmm. Social Media. And it looks so much better. It's not even funny. A lot better. <laughs> so, what did were you thinking? Cause that? Robert, what? yeah, because Robert's like so minimalistic, and I'm always like, like I love your words, Robert. I love everything he has to say. Your website, I hate it so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is this is my little peer group, right? I, we 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 tell each other the truth, but it doesn't help you to hear something great. You know, he's like, I know Ryan is working on it. So it came out. I was like, oh my god. Maybe, I know I can't really afford a lot. Maybe she could just make me a hero image. Like hmm. anything she makes is going to be better than anything I make in Canva, right? Yeah. So she looked at my website. She, I gave her my brand standards from Sherry and Cheryl. And then she's like, okay. And then she gave me like the stock photo of some lady, like just her mouth. Uh -huh. And she's super skinny and like I'm... 224 pounds today yesterday it was 221 but whatever like you know what i mean like yeah yeah <laughs> i'm like, like i don't want some shock picture of a nine me that's so not on brand and she goes this is how i interpreted it because she said it much nicer babe it's not about you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's about your audience your audience is supposed to be picturing themselves as your customer and i went oh man oh okay do whatever you think <laughs> <laughs> so then she gave me the image i tried to fuss around with it and fix it and i did a pretty good job in my opinion with beaver builder but then she said you know what i couldn't stop she said i can't stop i'm just gonna redesign your whole home page just give me your just give me admin access. And um, she was finishing it last night while I was watching everybody else line dance. And I I posted it, you know, of course, like Rhonda's my hero. You know me, I'm blasting all over the internet. Oh yeah, heck yeah, you do. And our friend Rochelle, who's a marketer at heart and started with design, but is also like a hardcore dev. She's wow. like, oh, I'd love to see the Google Analytics because she's like a Google Analytics nerd. So I just looked, I'm like, oh my God, the bounce <laughs> rate went down almost 11% in 24 hours. I expected a spike in visitors. I didn't expect 200 new visitors. Wow. And I didn't expect time on site to go from like one something to three minutes. Yeah. So, hmm. Huh. Wait, one something to, th oh my gosh. People are reading my site. <sighs> yeah. It's all uh, just all well, it's just, but like, because that homepage is so compelling. In fact, I have gotten yeah. about 10 blog comments today 
that I from people. I don't know. Maybe it's a commenting farm, but they seem legitimate to me. I was just surprised because, like, you know, all of a sudden, like, people are looking at my site and they're reading blog posts. Of course, I have revival post on, but still, like, I've had revival posts sharing my stuff. All I'm gonna say is like it's billions of times better now. Yeah. One of the things that was interesting is when it first launched, people were looking because I tweeted it right there on their phone. They go look at the mobile and they're like, the padding's kind of messed up. So I told her that. And then another person said, Yeah, it's common with Beaver Builder since their new release. I mean, they just hit a million installs, by the way. They did. <laughs> but um, but they have padding issues for their mobile versions of their pages. So she went to the Beaver Builder group and they told her and it's like in five minutes it was fixed. But it's just so funny, like, you know, it's like, it's like when you're selling a house mm -hmm. and, and all you do is paint the outside and the front door red. It's curb appeal. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're doing more than that on this. Okay, side. so there's a couple of things. So like huge curb appeal change, okay? Right. Like I got siding of the red door I've always wanted, like cobblestone door thing with like a cute little mailbox. Like right. literally the whole curb appeal of my website, my little home changed. But also she helped direct me on some of the copy which you normally don't think of designers doing. Cause I just like, just make me a hero image. I'm the copy person, but she's like, you're, you're still talking too much about yourself. So have them link right here. Just put a picture of you. That's fine. That's enough. And have them link to your services. Like they don't, if they can see you in that first section and they're like, Oh yeah, click. How can I help your business show its best side on social media? Right click now there's my pr pricing table because i'm not those i'm not one of those people i hate going to a restaurant or going to buy something and there's no price yeah. if there's no price i can't afford it i grew up poor yeah. there's no price i can't afford it so i feel like being up front if i want to discount somebody i could discount but that's my price right so like i just can't believe how much it's changed and it seemed it seemed like my website was fine. Well, fine is like a C. It was bringing in business. It wasn't a failure. But that simplicity of design is so hard. Priscilla was saying it's just like a Danish furniture or a haiku. Mm. That takes engineering. Yeah. Simplicity takes engineering. And I think sometimes we forget about that. And it's so easy to either neglect our site or just like, okay, that's good enough. And we don't think we need a designer, but like some people will work with you too. Like I was like, I know I can't afford a whole overall and I don't wanna have to deal with the whole overall cause I'm gonna be dealing with a hysterectomy in a month, right? Like I can only mentally prepare for so many things. Let's right. have a hero image. And she goes, well, let's go a little bit farther. You know, and she worked with me on budget, right? So you don't, it kind of goes back to a lot of things. I always say, yeah, something's better than nothing. But also, you don't know until you ask. You know, not every designer yeah. is $3,000. And, you know, and it, it seems fine, but like all of a sudden, I, I can't even explain to you how empowered I feel having my website look that good. I yeah. bought a logo, a uh, polo with my logo on it <laughs> so I can wear it and be proud about it. Like, she's like, if I knew you were going to be <laughs> doing stuff like that, if you designed your business cards, I'm like, oh, I don't need that yet. But you know what I mean? Like, Right. We forget, like you, you think people don't want your business card, but I'm at Hennessy's across the street, just having a burger. People ask me what I do. I'm handing out business cards all the time. I don't yeah. really do it that much at WordCamps because we don't, we follow each other on Twitter. It's a different culture. Yeah. Yeah. But still like people know people and stuff like, 
so I just thought like that was a long 20 minutes but still like that's the shortest way I could explain it basically yeah. sometimes I think even though we're the professional we have this blindness to our own stuff you know I, like, you see it once, you see it again, you see it again, you see it again, and after a while you're just like, okay, so the things I need to worry about are this section and this section, and that's it, and then the rest of it just turns into blur, and you kind of go like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And especially if you're a developer. So the developer side of it is that you're more worried about the functionality of it than the look and feel of it. And for you, you know, you were you were looking at it from the visual side of it. You're loading up on your phone. You're like... Most of these people are going to see this on my phone. How's it going to look on this? Okay, I'm having some issues with this. It'd be better with that. But I think good website design is not necessarily like, um, it, it's the whole package, but if you can really, really heavily rely on great photography, then you're doing awesome. You know, the church I work at, our website, if you turned off all the photos, is super boring. But the second you turn on the photos it just pops. It's like, yeah. these photos are constantly changing. They're constantly being used. You know, if you, you know, if you are, um, if you're speaking all the time and you get somebody to take your photo and they take a really great photo of you, you may want to sl slap that up on your site. And you may even want to say, Hey, just to let you know, this photo is going to be like this. And if you give me a wide enough shot, now I can crop in which side I want to use in. And you can now replace, you know, the, the lipstick girl on your site with, with your photo <laughs> of you up on a podium, if you wanted to, yeah. or, but you got to know what you're shooting it for and what, why you're going to do that. I mean, if you look on like your contact page, the contact page could definitely do that sort of thing. Like you could have another one of those big, huge hero graphics on there where it's you on like a phone. I mean, you could, you, there's a bunch of funny silly stuff that you could do, but that's just a bunch of really nice photos. You know what? That's what Rhonda wants me to do. That's my assignment. She wants me yeah. to find a photographer. She sent me a bunch of like ridiculous poses, like. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of brands. She wants me to make brands, my own goodness. stock photos. Yeah, you should. There's a lot of brands that um, that have there are WordPress brands that have done this that are that are just huge, you know. For it makes it look great, makes it yeah. look really really great. Yeah. So it's just funny because um, there was a um, I won't call them out, but there was a big agency and they asked me the same thing about their page, and I'm like, I thought you were owned by Alphabet. I didn't even know that. You guys build web pages hmm. and from the copy on this site <laughs> i don't know what you do and i work with developers like you know yeah yeah <laughs> i am in the css i just passed css flexbox on free code camp so i'm not totally unaware of things right <laughs> <laughs> but i was like wait what what do you do <laughs> and it's so easy to you know that elevator pitch like we talk about mm -hmm. um the, at meetups that we give or or sometimes we sometimes we like to be clever with the things that we say but clever things aren't necessarily memorable you know um yeah the really good pitches are the ones that we remember like give wp the most robust online donations plug in for wordpress go check them out at givewp.com right so yeah. x amount of years four years later i still remember that of course i said it a lot but that's the whole point of it right yeah so that you could say well i help I help WordPress developers and agencies sell their services. Easy, right? If they don't know what that is, I don't tell the gen pop that. I say, oh, I do it in social media with tech companies. They're like, oh, that's nice. I don't know what half of those words meant, but whatever. That's cool. I mean, you need the internet. That's oh, cool. you do social media. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. They know what social media is. Right. Yeah. But I don't have to say. I help WordPress products and services, you know. 
<laughs> some of my who are your clients? Oh, some of my clients are person you don't know, person you don't know, company you don't know, product you've never heard of. Look how great I am, right? Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Basically, I'm paying the rent. That's the only thing that matters to me, you know, for regular people. Otherwise, they say, I do marketing, you know, mm -hmm. like a kind of marketing, social media. I just let them do the conversation. But your website should be clear like that, too. And right. I think for me, actually going to my local pub and sitting there and getting to know like kind of the regulars and they ask me those questions, mm -hmm. helped me realize the things that Jocelyn and Rhonda were saying were true. Like, what is this? I know I would never have my Twitter bio that obfuscated. <laughs> like, I know my Twitter bio has to be, I have 160 characters. You know, you got to be concise and direct. Like, what do you do? Who are you? What's happening? But on my website, like there's, I can have as many words as I want. <laughs> Not on your homepage, girl. Not on your homepage. Save that for somewhere else. <laughs> Write a blog post. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> don't put it on your homepage. <laughs> well, and your, your, the homepage of your site doesn't have five, 500 blog posts on it it has like there's a there's a series of stuff that you have some twitter lesson stuff you got and then it's like here's your free advice blog section and here's yeah. a couple of those posts and then there's a read more that you can just go through and just read more of them and see the rest of them that are in there my favorite and suggestion is that let section kind of in the middle where it says done for you and do it yourself because right. before it's just, oh, here's my most popular content. Like that's too generic. Because I'm always talking about Twitter lists and here's the lessons and here's, you know, these other things you could do. But, but here's, here's a service you could buy, a Twitter audit, like boom, right there. Or you can take these lessons by yourself. Yeah. You know, I like, I, she's the one that came up with that. It like once... You know how they say, once you see something, how obvious it is? Right. Well, that's why we need to reach out. And the thing is, in WordPress, we have those resources. They're all over the internet. Oh, yeah. They're our friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, the, and the kindness is there. Nobody was like, oh, Bridget. Yeah. <laughs> how much money did this make you? <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> whatever like no yeah. somebody did ask me that i yeah. had a couple affiliate bloggers trying to pitch their thing with somebody i didn't know and he goes well how is this website making you money and i'm like it's brand awareness okay i'm not an affiliate blogger and no offense to people that are but that's not my thing right, right. i'm here to educate people so yeah. So my website is for education, brand awareness, and conversion, obviously, I need to pay the rent. But like this, this concept that, oh, because I had this many visitors uh, and this time on site, I should automatically have dollars in my PayPal account. You know, I could yeah. just retire now because I'm, I'm in the dot-com lifestyle. Right. It's... That I think that instant mentality is part of what is wrong. You know, I just saw a video with Gary V in it. It's like, you guys are all running the short game. 1% is doing the long game. I'd rather have 40 million in 2020 than six or three in 2017. Yep. You know, but like even the stupid let's make a deal show was on my, on the TV when I was at the dentist and I was like, why would you trade that in? Just you, you keep thinking cause you have something and there's something behind another door. You keep thinking that's going to be better. That's some mm -hmm. kind of confirmation bias, right. right? Just, you know, you have it go, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's so funny. And even Brene Brown was talking about it in her Netflix special um, that her son came home and said that the, he did so well uh, on his costume or something like that, that the teacher said, you can either have a free surprise or knock 10 points off your uh, lowest um, 
add 10 points to your lowest grade. And she goes, that's so awesome. Which grade are you going to do that for? He goes, no, I got the free surprise, the special treasure or whatever. It was uh -huh. some kind of dumb toy. That was, the, that was the guaranteed part for him? The guaranteed part, you know? And yeah. so we do like things for immediate. And that's, that's part of my problem. And I have the self-awareness to recognize it's like something's better than nothing. Because I think perfectionism is a form of procrastination. So like, okay, so even if you are going to redesign, do something for now, mm -hmm. you know, and then when I can afford it, I'll have her overhaul the rest, you know, right. Obviously she's proven herself. I mean, in 24 hours, mm -hmm. the bounce rate went from 70 something percent to 63. Yeah. That is a significant difference. And I don't even have a problem with bounce rate personally. And this is why for my site because I send them all the time through my tweeting and social posting to a specific blog post for a reason. You read that, that's all I wanted you to do, right? Yeah. Or if I send you to my services page and tell you I'm running 30% off of Twitter Pro and Twitter Basic for a May 1 start, I sent you to that page. You either want it or you don't and you leave and you should. There's, yeah, you don't have any call to your call to action at the bottom is like, did you already read this? Like that's <laughs> the, that's literally the call to action to the next thing. Is, right. So you either are going to fill out that form, and I'm going to write you back and send you a fresh books estimate, or you're going to leave. Like, and either right. way, that's a very fast decision. So either way, it's going to be a bounce. Mm -hmm. And so I know I know that a lot of people care about bounce rate, but either way, I was impressed with that. Time on site, time on site's what I like. And um, so I did a I did a screenshot today of the the before and after, like this week compared to last week. Yeah. So page views are up 151 percent. Wow. Uh, unique page views. Is 110 percent time on page. The average week week to week is two minutes instead of 149. I mean, I was looking at a different. You know how it's like it depends on the time period. Yeah. So uh, from April 18th to 24 versus 11 to 17, it's up 12 percent time on site, and the bounce rate's down 10.82 percent. So it was, my bounce rate used to be 77 point, 78%. I'm going to round up. My bounce rate used to be 78%. Now it's 70, 69 something mm -hmm. in that report. So like that is a big difference in about, I don't know, 36 hours. <laughs> it's not bad. It's kind of compelling. Well, and I think, I think the thing for, for, for people to realize is, is that when they look at your, one of your tweets where you're showing how many tweets you're actually putting out there, yeah, you're, you're, you're putting out a ton of content on Twitter. And if somebody hits one of those things, they're coming to your site, they're going to scroll around, they're going to click on some stuff and they may hit a call to action or not, but you're sending them enough of that stuff that they're going to be able to at some point go, okay, I've read enough of this person's stuff. Can I just pay this person already? Cause yeah. I'm really enjoying the content I'm getting out of, you know, the, the, the stuff that they're posting. Exactly. So uh, Rhonda is saying in the chat, she's like, wow, from one minute. Okay. So I'm on Google analytics right now on the home yeah. for what's going on right now. Like there's four active people right now reading my, blog post on kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the bounce rate 69.28, which we already knew that. The session duration is up 291%. It It's three minutes and 34 seconds. That's that's what this Alex is saying right now, right this minute. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, like anything over two minutes, I'm super happy. I'm the happiest yeah. person on the planet. Especially when you count how many minutes it takes for you to read a post or read the text that's on the page and it exceeds it. That's great. I mean, somebody went back and read some more or did any of those sorts of things. So there's a lot of people who offer audits 
uh, whether it's like a Twitter audit or a website audit or design audit, a lot of times those are loss leaders. Like for mm -hmm. me, it's a loss leader. It's only $99, but sometimes I do it to get the work too. Um, but right. a lot of people do these reviews for free. So why not find out like where your blind side is, especially if you're kind of like, well, I don't know where I should, you know, it, sometimes you, like for me, I was like, oh, I just know this isn't right. I just don't know what's wrong. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, hmm. You don't know what's wrong and you don't, you, you've put all your content in there. You're a great content writer, but it's like, is the content organized in a way that gets somebody to come to, you know, I hate to use the word squeeze page, but it's just that there, there's a reason why these things have, you know, ways of getting down to the spot that you want them to get to. And, yep. you know, you, your site's telling you look over on the right hand side. I'm looking at text, scroll down a little bit. I'm looking at a testimonial, scroll down a little bit more left-hand side, some stuff, right-hand side is some blog posts. Like it, your eyes aren't just going like straight down to the bottom and that's yeah. it. You're, you're jumping around a little bit. You're, you're able to kind of look at some stuff and see what's going on there. I think it's great. And it's, on mobile, mobile's the part that's good. That that's, that's where you got to win because yeah. that's where everyone's looking at it as on mobile. Yeah. And, and the thing is that in interior design, which I've watched enough of HGTV, in my lifetime and PBS before that in a bookshelf, that's how you do it. You don't just put books. You put some books and then like a vase and then you put like another little figurine with some books because you want people to move their eyes like this. Yeah. And so why do we think it's any different with website design? I don't know. I mean, I know that Mike uh, demo gives a talk, which way to use your duck face. Mm -hmm. And he, cause he's a, I don't know if you guys realize you guys being the audience, Mike Demo's a savvy marketer himself, but he always talks about the pictures where you're looking because if you're looking at something, it makes people look. So, um, like if you've ever walked on the street and people are looking up, you'll see people stop and look up. They don't know what they're looking at, but they see other people looking up. And so that's the same thing with like when you're on a website and you see somebody looking down or something like that, then you start looking down. So, because we're yeah. trained. So because Rhonda knew that uh, she wanted the customer to be able to picture themselves, just like when you stage a home, you stage a home, you get out, get rid of everything super personal. So that, that new family can imagine themselves living there. That's why the picture has no eyes. Hmm. The eyes are the windows to the soul. The eyes right. are what we relate to. So you have a soulless lady on the front page of your site? Is that yep. what you're saying? So I had one person <laughs> say, this is really great, but 6% of men have uh, red, green color blindness. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to take that risk because this color scheme came from my tattoo. And my tattoo was a moment of empowerment. You should be like, hey, look at my tattoo and then show them the other the other thing that doesn't have it on there. You're like, see, you can't see it anyhow. What's the problem? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I, I mean, I'm like, I do care that things are accessible, but like, right. you know what, it's fine. Yeah, like, that's fine. I, that's an acceptable loss for me because those colors are important. Red, oh. red is red. His and always will be one of those like very catching colors, you know. Gold, very catching color. You have those like great colors to to look at that just you know just really hate to use the word pop, but it's like they really just kind of grab at you and look and say, "Look at me. Look at the stuff that's here." Yeah, stop. Power. It makes you hungry. That's why McDonald's uses it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe that's why my bounce rate so high. Oh, she, she's I'm hungry. In the chat. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, most men are attracted to red lips, big red lipstick. Yep. That's cool. That's, that's absolutely true. I have found this out um, by wearing red lipstick. So, like, when I when I changed my hair to blonde, and it's going to go more platinum the next time because you have to do it in phases, um, people were like, oh, that's too blonde. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And I said, no, 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 no. 
every there's a blonde for everyone. But when you change your hair color, you have to change your makeup. Yeah. It's it's, it's crucial. So you wear black eyeliner, red lipstick. And I did, and people were like, oh, Brigida, who looks so amazing. Da, 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 well, whatever. By you, by you saying that, that also means the same thing on a website. So if you're going to have a very bright red in the background there, you're going to have to have trans, you know, tr contrasting colors. You're going to have a really great looking white text. You even have white text with a little bit of a, a little bit of a, like a stroke or what have you of, of black, you know, like a, either a stroke or a, um, or shadow or something like that. So you have just a little bit enough to just really make it, you know, stand out nice. Yeah, there, there's tons of those types of pieces. I know. And you just see the stuff. the faint cherry blossoms in the background. Yeah. Like she goes, oh my gosh, I'm going to have so much fun with your site. <laughs> and then Robbie McCullough was like, I just put all my J Japan pictures on Unsplash. She's like, yes, I'm going to use these on Bridget's site. Because I'm a sucker for cherry blossoms. That's what's in my tattoo. <laughs> so it, it's just so funny. Like, it's not just me. It's my business, but it's not just me. Yeah. I feel like that's the message. We, yeah. we, that's the that is the amazing part about the WordPress community. Not just when somebody dies or, you know, somebody's looking for a job, but like we are, we can function like a co-op if we want to. Right. You know, at that WordCamp um, I went to with Alex Vasquez, one of my first Orange County ones, maybe it was even 2013, it was either 13 or 14. He said, you know, partner with other people in this room and get the bigger yeah. clients and that's what i'm doing i True. or what my friends are agencies and i'm one of their vendors so they can do more work and so like we're all we could all help each other out so easily but you have to ask and in right. order to ask you have to be vulnerable to get over that imposter syndrome, like somebody's gonna judge you. Okay, mm. there'll be there was there's two people who had something negative to say about my website on the internet on Twitter. That's it. Oh darn, only that's two. an acceptable percentage. Okay. So you know Bye what? Buddy. And I'm not losing sleep from either one of those people. Okay. Right. So like I I'm just saying, like, go watch Renee Brene Brown's special on Netflix or watch one of her two TED Talks, and then think, who can I ask? Because it is hard to ask. It's yeah. hard to ask, because it's embarrassing. Like, oh, you're the marketer? You write copy for websites and look at your website. You're super <laughs> confusing to your own audience. You don't even know who you're selling to. Nobody said that to me. Zero people said that to me. Some people might have thought it, and they would have been right. But, but there's nobody treating you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I wanted to, I, I know we've got to do tool of tip of the week, but I did want to tell you uh, one thing you may want to look into. And this is probably something you could literally do while I'm telling you my tool or tip of the week when we get to that point. So I'll tell you just, just to start, just to kind of, you can play around with it a little bit. And there's plenty of ways to do this. This is not the best way to do it. This is just the easiest and quickest way to do it. Okay. Um, I use a plugin called WP scroll depth. Okay. And what this plugin does is it 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 figures out how far you've scrolled down the page and it puts little event markers in um, Google Analytics. So Ooh. that way it'll tell you where you where the person stopped scrolling. Yeah, I want that. So since you're using Beaver Builder, um, when you open up one of the elements that you want to track, if you go over to advanced at the very, you know, the very last one uh -huh. on the right hand side, scroll down to the bottom, you'll have class and ID. Yeah. Um, with any of the uh, the training that you've been doing, you know, classes you can reuse all the time on a page, IDs you should only use once. Mm -hmm. So what you'd want is set the ID, which would be the little hash mark, and you would tell it that ID is, say, comments, or it's uh, box number one or box number two or whatever it is that Bridget is going to be able to understand, you know, okay. from now. But what you'll be able to do is track how many, how, how many times people are hitting all the way down the page and getting to the spot that they're getting to. Now it's not doing anything else other than just scrolling down and finding those spots. But if you go look on that, um, if you go look on the, 
the 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 site for um, WP scroll depth or even just install the plugin, there's just like one box on there that says elements to track. And you just put in all of the elements that you want to track. You know, I want to put in comments. I want to put in my uh, contact box. I want to put it, whatever the names are that you're going to name them, name by them. By the ID? You'll do it. Uh, by the ID, correct. That you give it. That you give it. Yeah. I love that. Yep. And you can also do percentage and it'll tell you what percentage of the page they scroll down. You can also set the minimum amount of scroll height. So if a page is really short, you don't want to track it, tell it not to track it and it won't track it for you. That's awesome. But yeah. feel free to take a look at that. It's super simple. It, it costs you literally nothing. And it just it's just going to make it really easy for you to be able to get a rough idea of how far people are scrolling down on your page and it works for me. I've been using I, it for years. I love that. I have it's two. dead simple. It's nothing sexy or fancy or anything. It's dead simple. No, and you're right. So my free code camp, I actually know that. Yeah. It's a good thing to do at the end of the night. I, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> like, I just, it's like, yeah. it's like a puzzle. So I do have two tools or tips of the week because okay. I've been trying to do some crazy stuff. One of them is headliner app. And um, okay. it's a web app but it will make a video for you uh, with a text or with um, a link for a blog Ooh. post to share on social. Now I'm using it for one of my Instagram clients to repurpose her blog comment. So Rhonda uh, does podcasting and then she'll have these little squares on Instagram with like a little wave and, and, uh -huh. it and it's her voice, but it's like an image. And I'm like, that's so bitching. How do you do that headliner? So that's another thing you could do with headliners. You can put your own creative and then uh, upload audio. And depending upon how you're going to make it, like if you make it for LinkedIn, it can only be 10 minutes, you know. Okay. It's turning into a video, right? Right. Just nothing's moving. except, And there's like a little wave with the talking. It's so bitching. I, <laughs> I like... Um, um, ripped one of my own YouTube videos and tried it out. It's pretty cool. Cause you can put that on Instagram. I mean, like to me, I think the best use case is Instagram. Yeah, because, I think so too. Because I can put my YouTube videos anywhere else and blog posts or whatever. But I, I do like that because I've noticed for me, this is what I always tell people, go see, start making notes on how you behave on social what right. do you do? You know, um, I'll never forget when I was uh, doing a social media class at WordCamp Los Angeles last year. And I said, how many people use hashtags on Facebook? 90% <laughs> raised their hand. How oh, no. many of you click on hashtags on Facebook? Negative percent. One <laughs> hand. One. Wait, you can click it? Okay, I'm one of those. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So why are you using? You don't even use them. Nobody in this yeah. room uses them. You're the only one, sir. You know what I mean? So anyway, so I thought that was a good way to get more engagement on Instagram. Um, and it seems I'm experimenting with myself and sometimes my client, you know. Yeah. Um, Instagram is, oh, Instagram is really hard. That's another show. I just feel like because <laughs> they won't let you put links, Mm -hmm. you know so headliner app love that it's free you can pay i'm sure for something oh, sure. better but the other one i really really like um because i started getting back to doing videos again for myself is screencast o matic Ooh, and I found I like it by this. google because i yeah. said i want picture in picture screencasting because i used to use jing and maybe they do that now. I don't know. But I was like, whatever. I'll just try it. And so I wanted to, um, I was just like in that rant mood about stupid hashtags. Right. <laughs> guys, stop. Ha I, I can't even believe, when I start actually having a conversation with somebody uh -huh. about why they shouldn't hashtag their own name. Yeah. And then I show them how it works. They always go, oh. <laughs> Right, because they see people doing it, and everybody's just a bunch of lemmings falling off the cliff. So anyway, screencast from Maddox. So I could have done like all my Twitter lessons. That I probably should redo now, especially the new Twitter, which is yeah. so different. Um, oh, yeah. But anyway, like you can have that picture in picture, 
or you can hide the picture in picture, or you can go back to yourself or a combination. So like the second video I did, I had my little self down here mm -hmm. uh, and then I showed what I showed and then I clicked on a little button and then it went bloom and it was just me. So I could have started bloom with just me and then went to the thing and then had my little face done. Cause I'm so animated that yeah. I feel like uh, for me, I should be on video. Like I have that personality. So it makes the screencast a little more interesting. And so um, the other thing um, I want to mention, though, is I don't know if people know this because this is reminding me. I did a Facebook Live, Don't Let Social Media Become Makeup, Sex, and a Bad Marriage. Right, right. <clears throat> okay, so um, that got 1,400 views. And I was like, this should be on YouTube because I did a screencast on Maddox. I'm like, this should be on YouTube, right? Well, yeah. I don't know if you guys realize this. You do. I know you do. But you can, on your own Facebook videos, you can download them. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. So I downloaded it and I put it back on YouTube where it belongs. You know you know a friend that, that knows some of this stuff. <laughs> it just didn't occur to me. I was like, because I was just in a rant mood. Like, I'm going to sit in my chair. I got my coffee. Let's talk about this. Let's have a talk. Okay. This right. is time that she's a stock with Bridget. Your friendly <laughs> social media manager, right? <laughs> screencast o -matic, I like it because it's hard to explain hashtags to people unless you show it. it when you're showing it, because I'm talking to these travel people. Right. You know, people who sell travel, they don't understand it at all. And once you explain it to them, like, oh, okay. But that screencast o I think I'm going to be using the heck out of that. I might even buy whatever their thing is. I really, really like it. And, it, and I want, for me, I want to get back to doing tutorials. I don't think I want to do an, a monetized learning. That's not me. That's not, mm -hmm. doesn't fit my brand. Uh, like I'll come, you can pay me to come to your office. And I'll teach you guys. But for my own web content, I really like that screencast o It was yeah. clear and the, um, you know, I, like I'm sure most of the things do this now, but like it, sh it really hovered where the mouse was. It had like a highlighter thing. Oh yeah. So, yeah. It's, it, I watched it. I was like, okay, this looks good. Threw it up on YouTube. Nice. Easy peasy. I have one for you. So I found this one while we were while we were talking about your website. The the uh, the site is called palette.site. And what it does is it goes and scans your website looking for all the colors that are being used Ooh. on it. And then it um, will display the colors and it gives you a nice little color cube and it gives you what the website looks like. And you know, if you're using material design, what colors would kind of tie into that? And you get this nice clean little interface of looking at it. And it's a, it's a, um, it's a Chrome extension. So when you go to that website, um, there's nothing that you can do on the site. You have to install the Chrome extension. So you just click on, you know, Chrome or Safari or Firefox. Then go to some website, click on the thing in the, you know, in the little bar next to, um, um, next to the search or URL box, and then it will um, scan the site real quick and then give you all the colors it used. So that's P A L E T T E. Uh, that's palette S I T E. Yeah. Palette okay. site. Yeah. And I'll put Not that in. Palette, the... Like a palette that you. Uh -huh. talking <laughs> just for the people i never spell <laughs> it correctly that is so cool yeah there's a whole bunch of these sites that are out there uh, this one's nothing um nothing crazy special it just it's just cool that you just can quickly run it and then it'll just give you a list of all of the stuff yeah because i like colors.io for like picking because it's like a slot yeah. machine you can yeah. lock the ones you know you like go, and go, 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 boom, winner, winner, winner. <laughs> uh -huh. There's also ones that do it for Google fonts as well. So if you're looking for like oh. a good co collection of Google fonts, it'll give you all these Google fonts and you can kind of figure out which ones look the best. That's awesome. Uh, you know, just because of what we're talking about on this particular episode, um, you know, you, you may want to get adult supervision to kind of help you with uh, <laughs> <laughs> the site to look what look good. But it's it's pretty interesting to you know to be able to kind of quickly pull something together and then figure out what colors work best and what stuff you know works the way it needs to work, and yeah yeah super fun. That is fun. I I like all the 
information that you get from from just talking to people but you know it's those pain points we always forget about and um and we do get blindness for our own sake. So it's like proofreading your own writing. It's really yeah. hard. I have to read backwards. Yeah. yeah. And usually click publish. And I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not a great writer. I mean, I already have issues with speaking, but I'm not a great writer. But getting the getting all the words lined up together and make it work, you know, work the way it needs to work and get all those pieces kind of all jiving together um yeah yeah i mean it, anything you find online that's going to get you uh, at least far farther than you are currently you know is is great so being able to do something like this palette thing or being able to do you know searching for fonts or any of that fun stuff makes it so much easier speaking of writing so i listened to the espn radio because it's i just like to have it on yeah. and today's the nfl draft right well it was a couple hours well it's gonna go on for a while but anyway so they're talking about this one player blah 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 and his resiliency and they kept saying it i'm like dude resilient it's just you're resilient you're either resilient or you're not resilient and so i go i couldn't take it like dear espn radio it's resilient not resiliency so a bunch of people said they're both right what are you talking about but apparently like resiliency even though it's from the 15th century isn't very commonly used in america so right. like we're talking about american football you guys are using some dumb word nobody knows what you're talking about the guy's right. resilient Okay, that's all that matters. Well, that's why you picked on the NFL draft. And what oh. sucks about what sucks about those sorts of things is that you end up getting someone who sounds like they're smart, <laughs> and then everyone else kind of goes like, "Oh, he used that word. That's obviously a good word to use. I should use it too." And then you just see it, just like like wildfire, just gets used over and over again on right? that. You know, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what what is wrong with you? Are you kidding me? Like, why are you all saying that word over and over again? It's not even the right word to use. But to the all... point where there's a blog post on resilient versus resiliency. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I mean, like to me, I just think it's so funny. I'm like, wow, how much are you getting paid to say the English language wrong? Right. I mean, I guess you're getting paid to analyze college ball players and who's eligible for the draft but whatever like it's just so funny like so you know i can hear it you know an espn broadcaster say that and be like why are you crazy but my own site <laughs> right point like, right no, dude. <laughs> we all have blindness when it comes to ourselves it's okay to ask for help please do i am way open to questions uh people dm me questions all the time on twitter or send me emails or whatever just don't text me in the middle of the night and we're good but like what i mean why not ask because i had a social media guy asked me well what do you think i was sick about doing this and such blah, 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 blah. i go well i don't think you need to be an agency blah, 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 blah. but i would change your bio he goes what would you write and i just went because i'm so used to like how we do this show now right hey, can i have a title description <laughs> like i never used to be uh, that good of a writer i used to talk to jen and she would say i go how do you spit this out so fast she goes practice she's been doing it for 20 years or whatever yeah yeah we, we essentially play a game every week <laughs> <laughs> how fast can i spin up copy right but i was so good at doing it that i was like oh this is what your bio should be he goes oh my god it's amazing can i steal it i'm like i just wrote it for you Be blessed. <laughs> go and prosper or whatever oh man <laughs> right. oh man well bridget i want to say th there you thank go. you very much for for hanging out with me oh, i really appreciate it, it. <laughs> thanks for all you folks that have been hanging out in the chat room uh chatting up with us we post this stuff all over the internet uh, we post this stuff on facebook we post this stuff on twitter we post this on um even on our facebook group we have a we have a facebook group that we haven't used for a little while so i've been posting it in there just to kind of you know, spark up some stuff and kind of play around with that a little bit. But uh, yeah, feel free to go take a look at all those things. We're, we're posting this stuff everywhere on Twitter and all those places. So feel free to go take a look at that. And wherever you're at, feel free to listen to it and watch it there. Um, speaking of listening to it, this particular show is is actually a, a podcast as well. So if you want to listen to, to the podcast, 
Feel free to do so. You can go over to wpwarcore.com slash subscribe. That's where you can learn how to subscribe to this stuff and everything else that's there. And also, if you're um, if you're wanting to get on our show or get on to WP Water Cooler, feel free to do so. The way that you can do that is um, if you go on WP Water Cooler, there's a little box in the bottom right hand corner. Click on that. Type in your pat your not your password. Type in your email address, and then um, we'll we'll get you added to our mailing list, and you'll you'll get a mailing every week with uh, what's going on with the show and all the stuff that's going on there. Lastly, um, well, two things. Um, ServerPress, uh, makers of the desktop server, they're the ones that help sponsor, sponsor us here. Feel free to go take a look at all their cool stuff that they have going on over there. And one more thing is we're actually doing a live WP water cooler from um, WordCamp Orange County. So feel free to go take a look at that. Um, I posted that in the mailing list and sent that out. Um, there are tickets still available, but they're a little expensive. <laughs> so, so if you if you got a couple bucks that you want to spend, feel free to go um, spend those tickets. Spend money on those tickets. They are a little bit more expensive than uh, the normal. Um, they're the uh, they're like the uh, was it small like business a, sponsor? Yeah, small business sponsor. It's like two fifty or something like that. But feel free to go take a look at that. And um, and one other thing is we are streaming that live over on um, over on their channel. So. We'll be uh, we'll figure out how to get that going, and I'll make sure to promote the heck out of that as usual. But feel free to go uh, take a look at that and see all the stuff that we're going um, going to be doing over at uh, Fort Camp Orange County. That's about it. Talk to y'all later. You have a good one. Bye. <laughs>